here from Rain Country, God is good, all the time. And today I'm here to talk to you about natural pain relief. This is going to be mostly based on herbs that you can grow or even stock up on. And yes, I do have a couple of videos out there on how to make your own pain relievers, even one for your dogs. And though I'll be covering some of that first, I will also be going over some other herbs that you might want to consider, especially if the ones that I use don't work as well for you, because what each of us uses is going to depend on what grows best in our area, what we can get a hold of, and our own body chemistry. So it's good to have a list of several different kinds that you can look into. And remember, you can also do your own personal research by getting yourself a couple of good herbal books. Again, as I always say, one of my top favorites, or my top favorite, is Amy Fuel's The Homesteader's Herbal Companion, which I will always have linked to in the description box down below, plus a few other herb books that I talk about in other videos. And then when it comes to looking online, the best way to look up herbs that are specific to a need so we're talking about pain is when you go into your browser simply put best herbs for pain and inflammation or best herbs for depression so on and so forth whatever it is and that will pull up quite a few hits and then make sure you look at usually I try to look at the ones that have a list and like six nine ten whatever are in there and then compare the different web pages and what they say about those various herbs and if they all pretty much agree. So let me go ahead and get started by talking about what I've got going on here. I was supposed to get this done a week or so ago and I'm going to be, I'm making up some more turmeric capsules. Now these capsules are the kind of thing that we would use for a multi-purpose thing, but the turmeric based cap capsules have a couple other herbs in them. In this one, it's ginger and cayenne pepper. And so this is one of the two different capsules I have in the pain relief capsule video recipes that I will link down below. Now I've had a couple people come back to me on that that tried making the capsules and said they've worked really good for them. But again, this is something we, we would also take as a supplement when we feel that we need it. Sometimes it might be daily, sometimes it might be weekly. It just depends on when I think of it. <laughs> but it is a, just an excellent uh, combination of spices that you can use for various things. Now, before I go into too much more detail about the various herbs, a couple of things you should keep in mind. Most of those, if they're good for pain, they're also good for inflammation. And if they're good for inflammation, then they're usually good for pain because a lot of our pain is brought on by inflammation somewhere in the body. Now, some are more specific to pain in particular, but again, most of them are gonna help with inflammation and turmeric is one of those. So it's highly recommended if you can't grow it, I've tried numerous times, numerous different ways to grow it, inside, outside, in a pot, in the ground, in the greenhouse, nothing. <laughs> So I stock up on it in an organic powdered form and use it mostly in a capsule form. Though it's good to cook with and it has a nice flavor. I just, and I, there's only a couple things I will use it in and one is the homemade macaroni and cheese because I don't like the way it turns everything in the dish gold. <laughs> But, you know, that's entirely up to you. Some people like to make a golden milk out of it and, and use it in smoothies and so on. And, you know, the possibilities are endless of what you can do with turmeric. Now, turmeric is one of the things I do use in the pain reliever that I make for the dogs. It's an old video, so just keep in mind whenever I say that. It usually means poor sound and poor lighting because I didn't have the equipment I have now. But I will say that that's been pretty effective. Our little dog Cody is the one who's most likely to get hurt because he's so small and delicate, doesn't have a whole lot of weight on him. And when his sister, who's much bigger than he is, they get to wrestling, sometimes he sprains a leg or something. When I give him one of those, it usually he's better within 10 to 20 minutes, he's back to playing again and he's totally fine, even if he could barely walk before I gave it to him. So very effective method. And then another one that I use in that same recipe is the catnip. And this is also one of the ones I used in the cap in the other capsule. So that brings me to my tincture or extract, whatever you wanna call it. You know, I have a video out there about the differences between tinctures and extracts. 
and I still don't think I'm right. I'm getting so confused on that. But either way, they're all extracts. So we'll just call them extracts from here on out. That way it won't be so confusing. So what I have going here is I've started more jars of an extract. I've only started them, um, what, I, a, a few days ago. So I got to let these sit for a couple months. I usually leave things like this out on the counter and shake it periodically for about a week. Then I put it away in a dark cabinet and just forget about it for the next six to eight weeks. My what I find is that my pain relief extract for me has been the most effective. It works better for me than the capsules that I make because I can take just a little bit of this and within 20 minutes my headache is gone. But it is time to get more because I made this up two years ago. So the recipe video I have out, which I'll link to down below, was made two years ago. I'm finally starting to get to the bottom of it. Now the old one, the one I made that you'll see in that video, is made with the catnip. The Feverfew, it's one of the top ones out there when it comes to pain relief. However, it's also the most bitter one. But keep in mind too, the fact that it's a bitter also makes it very good for digestion. Now I have a video just on Feverfew and the benefits. However, it is one of those that pregnant women have to be careful when they take it. And this was the other point I was gonna bring up is that a lot of times the most effective herbs, that you know, the ones that are best for pain, there are several of those that you also have to be careful with because they are the ones that can be most likely to cause other health issues. Now, I've never had problems with Feverfew. In, during this time of the year, we use it in the extract form and when it's growing fresh in the garden, then we eat it fresh. We both do that, even though it's horribly bitter and not at all enjoyable. And, I use, and I'll take it when it's in the garden, I'll take it in conjunction with the catnip. Now, the extract from last year has three things. So it's the catnip, the feverfew, and the echinacea leaves and flowers. So yes, you can use the leaves, the flowers, and the roots. Technically, with when you're talking a lot of herbs, if the whole plant is usable, a lot of times you'll find most of your benefits in the roots, but in some cases, such as dandelion, each part of the plant, it'll all be beneficial, but each part will have a little bit different benefits. So uh, I've yet to use the root on my echinacea because I've just been a little loath at digging any of it up because it's so precious to me. <laughs> but the leaves have been effective in many ways. So it's one of the things I would use in my new antibiotic extract along with the nasturtium leaves and oregano because it's, it's antibiotic but it's also anti-inflammatory and does help with pain. So those three were the ones I, I used in equal amounts in my extract. Now anymore these days almost all of my extracts are made with my own homemade wine because I can make it from my own fruit and it's a lot cheaper than going out and buying vodka and I find it to be just as effective. So one of the things I did differently with this new extract I started, and again, this is gonna be equal amounts, I used the same thing, the feverfew, the catnip, and the echinacea, and then I remembered, this is why the, it's such a big batch, I remembered I also wanted to add some valerian leaves. Valerian is, it's, it's one of those things that's really great for, for muscle relaxing and also help sleep it's very it's got very sedative properties the roots are incredibly powerful for that and I've used the roots for making my deep sleep muscle relaxer extract which I have a video on that as well but for those who are really sensitive to it you might find using the leaves instead they're just a little more mild can be very beneficial and also very helpful for pain so I decided it was one of the things I wanted to add to my extract this time and again i decided to go with equal parts the other thing i added to this and you know this is just to help with the flavor really but it's also very good for you is some raw honey so i mixed the raw honey and the wine together and then added the herbs in and then add and then topped it off with the wine after i had everything mixed really well so what that was for these two quart jars it was a cup of each of those herbs so each jar would have two cups of herbs and then topped off with the wine and the honey mixture so we'll see in a couple months how well that works i have a feeling it's going to work just as well if not better and also be a little tastier because that fever few is so bitter it takes a lot to help cover up that flavor and make it somewhat tolerable in fact i find i can eat it off raw off the plant easier than it is 
the flavor I can handle better that way than I can from the extract itself. Now I'm gonna go back in time here and let's come back to, before I continue on with the herbs, let's talk a little bit about essential oils. When I first started going with the more natural things, trying to get ourselves off of all medications, be they over the counter or prescription, which were off all of them, one of the first things I did was looking for something that was good for pain. And I started by looking into the essential oils I was already using for various other things. I'm not a big essential oil diffusing kind of per person. I didn't get into it the way a lot of other people did. I, I started buying essential oils mostly for using in muscle rubs, in anything that was topical like that, my skin creams and so on. But when I started learning a little bit more about how they can be good as aromatherapy, then I did start trying to experiment with them when I would get headaches. And I started with the lavender and found that that worked, that was pretty effective. And then I decided to mix the two. I do a blend. My favorite blend is to go half and half lavender and rosemary. Now for most people, and if you know anything about essential oils, it's best to put it in a carrier oil so it doesn't burn your skin. I've never had issues with it. I use my oils neat when it comes to that kind of thing. And so I would just, I'd actually mix them in a little bottle and keep that handy. And, and I keep a bottle in my purse too. And then I'll just rub a little bit under my nose. And it's, it's amazing to me how quickly it works to help alleviate pain. But I don't like to be too dependent on essential oils, especially when it comes to inhaling any of them. I, I just think people, you know, you got to be careful before you jump head first into a lot of this stuff because doing a little more looking, essential oils have been very helpful and beneficial to a lot of people. But on the other hand, there's a lot of other people that you don't hear about as much that have had some serious, serious side effects because they've used them too much, too often, inhaling them, taking them internally, just using them in so many ways like that, that uh, though, yes, some are safe to take internally, you just have to be careful with which ones you're doing that with and how often and how much you're taking them. This is not something I use all the time, but it is nice to have on hand, especially because this is easier to carry in my purse than an extract. Or I could carry the capsules, but these two things, the extract and the essential oils, I found to be more effective. Now, peppermint is another good one to use, and I've even made a blend with the peppermint, rosemary, and lavender, and that is also good, but I do think I prefer just the two mixed together because uh, the peppermint is, you know, it's very kind of hot, cold. And so I find this to be a more comfortable one <laughs> to use. But either way, they are, they, they do work very well. And some people also have really good results with Frankenstein. Frankenstein. <laughs> and some people also have really good results with frankincense. <laughs> uh, excuse my uh, faux pas there. But uh, And I do love frankincense. I've never used it for pain relief. That's just something that goes in my skin care, in my skin cream, because of the benefits it has to your skin. Okay, so now let me go on and talk about some other, I don't have these things out, but some other herbs that you can either grow or purchase. I recommend purchasing things in a bulk form and then making your own capsules or teas out of them. Now, one of the most common ones you may have heard of is white willow bark. And the reason you may have heard of this one is just what aspirin originally came from and then it became synthesized. So that's why I stay, that's why I'd say stay away from aspirin. Anything that's been synthesized, it may work, but it is also going to have more severe side effects. However, <laughs> white willow bark, it does still have some of the similar side effects, so you gotta approach that one with care. But you can buy it in an encapsulated form, or you can buy it in a powder and make your own. I think I do have some white willow bark capsules around here somewhere, but I don't recall if I ever tried using them or if they helped me with pain. I. I really don't remember. Now cloves are something that can be useful both internally and externally. A lot of time when people think something like clove oil, that's usually used when you have toothache. You can rub that clove oil directly around that tooth and in the gum area and it will immediately numb the area and alleviate the pain. So, and that will apply to anything, but it can also be taken internally. I take cloves 
though I haven't tried it specifically for taking internally for pain, I add cloves to my spice tea that I make quite a bit during the winter time. And I just, I love cloves. They're one of my favorite spices. Like many of the other herbs and spices, cloves are both a good analgesic, which is a pain reliever, and anti-inflammatory. It is also something I include in my muscle rub recipe because it, it gets in there to the tissues and joints. It helps numb the pain in joints and muscles and tendons. And so it's why it's one of those I include in that recipe that I'll link to down below as well. We mentioned the red pepper. That would be the capsaicin in the red pepper. I did not find anything specifically on it being an anti-inflammatory but it is also the capsaicin in your red peppers, in your, any of your hot peppers, is good at helping to alleviate pain. So it is also a good analgesic, which is also why I include it in this uh, recipe here with the turmeric. And then ginger, another one included in the turmeric recipe, a good anti-inflammatory and analgesic and then wild lettuce is another one you might have heard a lot about this very popular now i finally found some growing in my garden this last year and though i did nibble on a leaf i can't remember if at the time i was just tasting it or if i was trying it to see if it would help with pain now wild lettuce when i was first looking into it what i was finding a couple of years ago is that you have to be very careful with it uh, sometimes people even call it opium less lettuce even though it's not opium it they call it that because some claim it's as effective as opium for for its pain relieving properties. But with that, it's another one of those that I think you just gotta really look into it for yourself because it can cause some digestive issues and a few other things. So, but that just really applies to any of your herbs, any of your spices that you plan on taking in any type of medicinal form just look into it and see a lot of times it can simply be just medications that it's interacting with but you know again each of our body chemistries are different because i've had several people come into my video saying that they use wild lettuce and find it to be very effective so i'm thinking this next year i'll start trying as it starts growing again in my garden because i didn't pull it up i'm thinking i'm going to start experimenting with it and try it for myself just to see how effective it is against the other things I use like the fever few, the catnip, and the valerian leaves. And then one more I want to mention is arnica. Arnica is something I've also been infusing the flowers. I also started growing it this last year. I only got a couple of flowers, but hopefully this next year I'll get a lot. But the, it's the flowers of the arnica that are used. And I infuse that into the oil that I'm using in my muscle rub because it's not only good at healing bruises and sprains and strains, it's also good at helping to curb the pain. So that's an, why it's another good thing to add to any kind of muscle or joint rub that you're making or using. You can buy an already infused Arnica oil, but I would prefer to infuse my own. Arnica is one of those things, you don't take it internally, it's used only in its topical form. All right, well, that's my video. I know there's even more pain relievers out there that I didn't mention, that I have read about. You can do your own research, but what I'd really like is for people who've been experimenting or using various different natural herbal type especially pain relievers whether you're using it topically or you're using it internally go ahead and share with us your experiences down below how it works for you what it is you're using are you making blends like i do or are you just using one herb and find that to be good all the way around and by reading what works best for other people because again what i'm using here for myself may not work as good for you as it does for me so by us sharing all of our experiences we can get a pretty well-rounded idea because sometimes just reading facts in a book or on a web page isn't enough but hearing real life experiences can be very helpful to head us in the right direction to find what's best for us all right well i hope you enjoyed this video thanks for watching take care and god bless